Diego. As we say, fuck under Robbie. I've got the t-shirts. Well, I haven't started selling them yet. I, I know people want the t-shirt, but you guys need to be a bit more patient because your delivery system in Cyprus is dog shit. I'm sorry. Like, it's, it's terrible. I don't know how you even... Anyway, this is an impromptu podcast. I told you guys last night that I was going to do one. I, was, I told you guys I was going to shock people, but no one tends to listen whenever Stel talks. I'm not surprised. I do a lot of fucking talking, as you can tell from now. So without any further ado, I've got a very special guest on. And um, I'm going to throw him in in just a second. Where is he? Hello. <laughs> How are we doing? I'm good, mate. How are you? And we've done the how are you already before going live, but just for the benefit of our listeners, how are you? I'm very good, mate. I'm very good. Yourself? Mm. Hey, I'm, I'm flying. It's Monday morning. We got the day off work, obviously, for certain reasons, which we're not going to yeah. go into. Yeah. But, um, yeah, all good, man. No, I'm on here. It's good. Oh, Perfect. Yeah, Perfect Monday morning, mate. That's it. It, 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 it. Listen, as a footballer, you know, the day after a loss, it's difficult because you might have a recovery session and everyone's pissed off. People might be arguing, but as a fan as well, like I don't know who it hits harder for the fans or harder for the players. Well, try and be a player, but try and be a fan as well. You know, is is uh, I'm sure it's hard for both sides, but you know, I think as a player, you look at, you look at all your uh, you know yourself personally and critique yourself and. And the fans will obviously look at the the goods and and the bads as well. So and they'll obviously critique you and you know say who played good, say who played bad. But all all comes with the game, mate. I suppose. Mm. I know we've spoken about Omoni yeah, in terms of your time there and the pressures that were involved. But what do you think the players are going through now, given you know winning, winning the title with Berg, winning the cup with Lennon? And then qualifying for Europe. Do you think the pressure is higher now that, you know, obviously we got the title, the first title in like 10 years. I mean, you yeah. were there when yeah. we struggled to win titles and it must have been frustrating for you knowing that you come from Olympia, got us winning titles, playing European football, going there. And the expectation was there, but perhaps the players around you weren't as, uh, what's the word, motivated as you were? Hmm. Um, I think the expectation's always been there at that club mm. and, w and will always be there because of how many titles Ammonia have won. Um, and that should never go either, ever. You know, the fans deserve that um, and the club deserves that. But I think now more than ever because of, you know, winning titles so 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 close by and Obviously, winning, the, winning, you know, silverware and being in, in, in Europe is, is obviously an extra pressure, but it's obviously a lot more difficult because being in Europe, you have a lot more games. Um, so, obviously, if you don't have a big squad, it, it can be very demanding. So, um, I'm sure that the club are uh, doing doing their, their homework and, and they obviously know what it takes to, to be in Europe you know, Champions League, whatever it might be, whatever competition, cup competitions and uh, wanting to be at the top of the league and wanting to win silverware. So, you know, you really do need a, 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 a big squad and, you know, with depth, is, which is very important to be able to, to compete to win a title in, uh, in Cyprus. But you need leaders in that squad as well, bruv. I mean, you remember Absolutely. when you were there, obviously you were the captain and you were the, the focal point. But after, you, well, when you left, we had the likes of Huberchan and, and Lufner and, and Jordi and Gusu. Yeah. But I think the main concern for a lot of us supporters right now is that we don't really have that leader anymore. I mean, obviously, Gusu is still there, but he's not there physically because he's, he's been injured. And all right, he's returned, but he's got, another, he's got another injury. But I look at that squad and with the exception of a couple of players, obviously Foddy, because he's the experienced one, I don't see someone there that you could say, yeah, you can call upon him as, as that focal point, as that talking point. I mean, I don't know. What, what was it like when you were there? Um, honestly, mate, we, we had... We, the transition of players was mental, mate, anyway. You know, in the first couple of years that I was, I was there, and then uh, I think when Larko came in, it kind of settled down a bit. He wanted to keep players uh, on a longer-term contract or he wanted to keep a more 
settled squad, which is very important, you know, because every year trying to change 12, 13, 14 players is ridiculous. You can't build any momentum, you, you know, any relationships, nothing really. But I think it got to a stage where when things started to change, you could see it because we had the likes of Lufner, we had the likes of myself, Jordi, Kusalos, um, obviously Jan was there, Thomas Hubikam was there, um, and they all wanted to win, mate. Forget about the leaders, they just wanted to win. And you could tell, obviously, the quality was a lot higher as well, because they've obviously been playing at bigger clubs and they've won things and they wanted to win things. The hunger was there to win things, where previously, I'm not saying every play was like this because there wasn't, you know, players did want to win, but uh, with certain things going on around the club, you know, it was very difficult to, to concentrate on, on certain things. But obviously when the, the new president came in, you know, he changed a lot of things around, mate. He really did. And, he's, you know, he's, he's been fantastic for, for the football club. Um, you know, what, he, what he's doing for the, for the club. You know, a lot of people might sit, think differently, but in my opinion, he's, you know, he's, he's done, done very well. Well, you were there with that transition. Yeah. So when, okay, so it's a two-part question. So when, when Baba Slava first came in, what were you thinking in terms of your future? Because you've seen it on numerous occasions, new owners, new head coaches, new this, new that. At first, did you think, oh, you know, things might change from my position? And number two, did the players think, like, what the fuck is going on here? We're going from this culture, this ideology and moving over because obviously there's a whole gate nine issue as well and I'm on 29 so what was all of that like for, for you and, and the rest of the squad um I, yeah obviously I welcome change mate I don't I don't mind the change um in a good way you know if it's a, if it's a, if it's in a positive way and it's going to help the squad and help help the team then I'm I'm way, I'm very open to all that sort of stuff you know thankfully Thankfully, he came in and made a, a, a very positive change, you know, off the field, on the field, um, players coming in, players going out. Uh, so straight away, you know, he brought in, I think, Larko was there as well. And obviously, Henningberg came in, obviously won a lot of silverware in his, in his time as, um, as, a, as a player and, and as a coach, he's, you know, he's, he's won a bit as well. So... It was it was nice to see that things was going on the upwards, you know, because for two years, my first two years, you know, I loved I loved playing, I loved playing regardless. I you know I would, I would try to give everything, everything I can, but it's it's so difficult when you're not winning things, and you, you know you came there for a reason. I came to Ammonia to play European football. I wanted to I wanted to win silverware, you know, but the first two years was very difficult. But I knew if I stuck at it. Things will change. Things will change. Things will change, and eventually they did. And you know, I'm I'm so happy that I I, I stayed at the club and and signed a longer term contract, and things worked out well in the end. I think they did. They did. But obviously, um, all good things must come to an end. And you left the club, and that was a very emotional time. I remember. I'll never forget that that interview you did with George. Yeah. And I was like, fucking, it's, it's the first time in a long time I can actually say to myself, I was actually welling up watching a fucking interview with a footballer saying that he's leaving. And it's not because of you. Well, obviously, it is because of you. But I think because of the, the relationship that you had or have with us and the history that you have with us and what you've done for the club, it was very difficult. And obviously, because I know you as a person as well, it, it was very, very difficult. Um, but when you went to Australia, I know you came back to to Cyprus with Ayek. Um, was there any chance of you coming back to Omoni? Was there a conversation that you had with the club or anyone? Um, well, first of you all... Don't have to, you, don't have to, listen, you don't have to answer that question, but obviously... No, 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 no. I, I can answer. It's no problem. No problem at all. But first of all, going back to the interview, yeah, it was very difficult for myself leaving the club massively, mate. You know, it was a decision which I made, which I thought was right. Um, for the family to be to be going to Australia to live there permanently, you know that was the, that was the decision to go there and live permanently. But obviously with COVID, it, it really, really, really killed things, mate. You know, I couldn't leave 
Australia and the family couldn't come into Australia. So it was, it was total lockdown inside there. Obviously, there was no COVID at the time. So, which was great for living wise, um, but seeing the family, seeing you know my wife's family was was very very difficult. Um, so, it got to the end of the season, and luckily we made this decision because after the decision, it was total lockdown for months and months and months and months again. You know, so that, that's you know, right I've, because I've managed that's to right because you all the time. Yeah, because you you left. Okay, it was the end of the season when you left, but you know we were in the playoffs. I think we beat, was it Ireland? Didn't we beat him 3 0 when you scored the penalty? I think, was that your yes. last game for the club? That was my last game. That was my last goal for, for Ammonia. Yeah. We, I, I think we'd have done the double that season. The, moment, yeah. the momentum we had, I think we'd have done the double. Yeah, I, honestly, mate, I was, I was obviously devastated not to be able to carry the season on and, and win mm. some silver work. But I, I just believe that what I left, when I left the club, I, 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 I left. The club in a in a very very good good state good yeah. way, and I was proud of that, mate. You know, I was proud to leave the club where the club should be, if that makes sense. Mm, absolutely. Um, I felt like I'd done my job. Did I leave? Did I leave too early? Yeah, hundred percent. I left a year, maybe two years early, but I'll never regret going to Australia and experience that that sort of life. Um, you know, and, and being able to play football over there as well. But yeah, hundred percent left too early. Um, but like I said, I'll never, I'll never uh, look back on it and say, you know, what have coulda, shoulda. It's done. I had an amazing four years at, nearly five years at Ammonia, um, and one I will always, always look uh, back on very fondly, mate. Very fondly, exactly. You know, for sure. Could I could I have signed again for the club? Um, I mean, listen, when when I got to Australia, I realised pretty pretty quickly I'd, I'd kind of not made a mistake, but I thought, right, you know, it's total lockdown here. We can't see this. We can't do that. And I did speak to Bergen, and I asked him, is it possible to for you know to be a route back to the club? You know, I would love to come back. Um, and we did speak about it. We did speak about it, but unfortunately, at the time, they had you know enough strikers there, um, and it's very difficult. You know, every team has four strikers, and they had four strikers. They didn't need any more, so that was the way it was, mate. And unfortunately, um, I, you know, there was no pathway back for me. Mm. The thing is, I remember when you joined Ike, and I was I was happy for you because I know how much you love the island, and I know how settled you and your family were. Yeah. And to be honest, Ayek, they're not obviously a heavyweight in Cyprus, but they're slowly becoming one. If you look at their performances in Europe recently, they've been yeah. fantastic. They've been flying the flag for Cyprus. Um, so you, I, I feel I felt you joined a very good club um, with a very promising head coach in, in, in Gadala. And obviously he's, mm. he's gone to Abolon now. Yeah. But the thing is, at the same time, when, when I talk to some of the players that have since left on money, for example... Dura, Duris, who came under immense criticism. And it's almost as if the moment he joined us, people felt, oh, he's got to replace Matt. And I was saying, you can't... First of all, it's not fair, fair on you and it's not fair on him because he's a completely different player to you. Completely different player. Yeah, he's not going to get you 10, 15 goals. He's going to be a player that's going to be more like a like a false nine, but he'll get involved in the game. He'll, he'll do what kind of like Guggles thing now. He's, he might not be scoring goals, but it's what he does off the ball. And I think you yeah. and I had the conversation about Dura in, in, privately in the sense that yeah. it's not just about scoring goals. It's what you do off the ball as well. And I, I, I think he was under a bit of pressure to replace you, which obviously that wasn't what he was brought in for. But I think, again... Anyone that came in to, to take your centre forward spot was always going to be under uh, under pressure, and that, that's not to like how can I put it? Not to criticise you, but at the same time, it's like I think it's a compliment as well because anyone that comes in as a striker when Matt Derbyshire leaves, th there's going to be pressure, man. Yeah, and to be honest with you, I felt for him a lot, mate, because you know when he came in, I was still there, you know. I, I, I agreed to stay at the club until they found a replacement. That's right. Um, That's right. To yeah. Help, to help the club out in the, in the in the Champions League qualifications. Unfortunately, I didn't get to stay long enough to be able to play in the in the competition. But 
thankfully they found the centre forward and and uh, you know I stayed until I was needed and then I left and packed my bags for uh, Australia. But I remember I remember him after I don't know, could have been five or six games he came under a bit of scrutiny and I remember texting him saying, "Listen, mate, um, you know don't worry about everything around you." You know I, you know, I sent him a nice message and you know, he sent me one back and it was I just wanted to make him feel that. You just keep doing your thing, and all, all good things will come, you know. Um, because it is difficult, mate. I mean, I've been I've been in that position as well, where I've gone to a club, and there's been a centre forward there that was, you know, the fans really really liked, and it it, it done really well for the club, and it hadn't worked out for me either. Uh, so so I, I knew where he was coming from, and I and I really wanted him to succeed as well, you know. And every centre forward that goes to the club, I I really really want to uh, to succeed where. Where players will go, ah, he's never going to do this. Never, gonna, you know. I really want the club to do well. So anyone that puts that jersey on, mate, um, you know, I'm rooting for. But yeah, he did do well. It, in my in my books, he worked hard for the club. Maybe he didn't score enough goals, and strikers are always judged off their goals, mate. Always, regardless of what you do off the ball. At the end of the day, you, you know, you look on a team sheet. Did he score? No. Did he score? Yes. It's, that's the way it is, mate. We sent it forward, you know. And I remember, yeah. mate, I remember myself, I hadn't scored in three or four games and, you know, fans are saying, hey, what's going on? What's going on? You're feeling okay, like, you know? But I, you know, I enjoyed it, mate, because I, I thrived on um, the expectation. Um, I, I, you know, I thrived on having to score, having to win. It's great, you know? Did you thrive on, on proving people wrong, though, as well? Because I think that's the other thing with Dura in the sense that he got so much criticism, but you could tell that every game, that the more the more he went on without scoring, the more determined he was. And I think that's that's a great trait to have as well, not to let the criticism get to you, but to to like motivate you, really. Actually, so Shaw's a, a warrior, mate, isn't he? You know, true fighter is... is uh... Because it can kill loads of people, mate, straight away. But you know, especially in front of the Ammonia fans, you know, you've got to be very, very strong, very, very strong. You know, and I remember the same thing, mate. I went my third season there with one coach. You know, I went and I think I scored two goals, mate. And it was so, so, so difficult to to go out there and play, mate, because I play for the manager. I play for the coach. You know, when when the coach ain't believing in your, you know, certain people, it's very difficult to to go out there and put that jersey on and and give everything you've got. But you know, he went out there to do this and give everything he went, had every single game and and fair play to him, mate. The thing is that I think they done him a bit. Of, well, they did do him dirty, in all fairness, because I remember he came on the pod to tell us about the situation when last summer, in fact, the summer that you joined Ike, which was last summer, obviously. Um, they said, yeah, he's, he's got a future at the club. And then a couple of days before the window closes, they said to him, oh, we don't need you anymore. And he's thinking, what the fuck am I going to do now? Like, you don't want me to play. And then he's when he was brought on in the games, knowing four they didn't want him, you know, he's, he's blocking off defenders to, to cause havoc, which led to goals. He's scoring penalties, high pressure penalties as well. He's, he's still giving his all, regardless Mate, of... You should know more than anyone, this is football. Of course, the, of course. The club wants to win. The club wants to win, and if yeah. you know, you're just you're just a number at the end of the day, and it's not. It's every club, regardless of where you are. You know, um, they they want to win things. It's a business. They want to you know they want to bring financial gain to the club, and in order to do that, you've got to have the best players or what what they think are the best players. Um, to be able to do that, to bring the money back into the club, to you know, to invest or to do whatever with, but it's football, mate. You know, as a player now, I know. For instance, when when I left the, my last club, it's you know, it is what it is, mate. It's not. It's one man's opinion, maybe two man's opinion, and and I'm okay with that. If you're if I'm not for you, no problem, and you move on. But the thing is, it's all about being professional as well. Yeah. And listen, you you've seen some fan. In fact, you played with some phenomenal footballers. But I'm sure you've seen a few in the dressing room to think your heart really ain't in it. And with Dura, it would have been easy for him to say, "Okay, they don't want me. 
there's no interest, so I'm not really going to play. But he, he showed the effort and he made the effort and he showed that commitment as well. And look, you played against us for, for Ajax, right? And you scored that goal. And again, it's back to that professionalism. While you had that affinity for Omonia, you had four or five years at the club and obviously we still love you. And even, you know, when you scored against us, I don't know anyone that gave you any criticism. You still scored because you were doing your job. You're, you're an Ajax yeah. player or you were an Ajax player and that's your priority. They're paying your wages and you're going to score from regardless of who's against. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to be professional, mate. Always, always, I think. Just being a good person in general as well. Um, you know, sometimes it, it can be very difficult because of things that go on and happen in football. But um, I think I've always said that, you know, the cream always rises to the top, mate, regardless of, of what happens to you or what, you know, you have the situation you're in, whatever. It always rises to the top, mate. And uh, it's, it's better to be the bigger man and... and uh, Walk away, or sometimes you know I've been I've been at fault massively. Sometimes you know I've I've had arguments with with coaches, which maybe I should have bit my tongue and said, eh. but when you care so much about football, when you care about winning so much, it's very difficult to bite your tongue, mate. You know, so. Well, this is it. What is it? What do you think when you hear about? Because we see a lot of players come to Cyprus, and when they don't perform, a lot of fans are like, "Are oh, they tourists? They're tourists." Yeah. Okay, look, I'm not going to say that. What do I think about it? What do you mean? Well, look, I mean, look, I'm just going to say like, I'm going to say it like it is, yeah, because that's that's how I am. I believe that the majority of footballers that go to Cyprus, they take it serious. But there's always a, a small percentage who will take the money or they'll take the lifestyle and then that's it. Yeah. yeah. So as a professional yourself, obviously you're going to be a little bit offended when you hear that term being used. But at the same time, I think you know that there's a little bit of truth when it comes to some players. Not all of them, but a certain um, percentage. I think, I think, first of all, I think people come to Cyprus and think it's going to be an easy league, mate. It is not an easy league, let me tell you now. I'm saying, you know, you know I've, been, I've, been, I've spoken to agents and, and managers and players and said, ah, it's only Cyprus, mate. Anyone could score 27, 28, 20, 30 goals a season. No, no problem. Mate, it's not like When did that, that last happen? When did that last happen in Cyprus? Someone scored 27, 28. I can't remember. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it, mate. Stop it. But uh, I, think, <laughs> I, think the, uh, I think the term tourista, I think, listen, mate, when things ain't going well, when things are not really going well, and I'm sure a lot of players go there with good intention to do really, really well. And when, they're not, when it's not going well, like, like we're speaking, what tourists didn't do, a lot of players would go, ah, fuck it, you know. Let's just enjoy the life. Forget, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm done with all this negative stuff. I'm, let's just enjoy the life, and that's how it probably happens, mate. You know. Um, thinking, you know, oh, it's great. I'm getting my money. I'm getting. I've got the lifestyle here. If I go into training and do that, and I don't think players intentionally come and say, ah, I'm just forget that. I'm gonna set the money and enjoy the life. It probably works out in the end that it happens like that. Do you know what I mean? To, to certain players. But if you go there with a serious mind and you take the, the league um, very serious, because it's made, believe me, it's not, a, it's not an easy league by any means. And it's getting better and better, by the way. Um, you know, you, you can do really well, though. You know, you can do really, really well, especially playing in these Champions League competitions and European competitions. Tell me, Premier League players, mate, play in the Premier League for... 20 years and don't even get to touch Champions League ball. Do you know what I'm saying? So you have a massive opportunity there to go and play in these European competitions. Maybe it's not for a long, long period of time, but you know, you're know you still going to get to play in these competitions against big teams. Joe, you know, that's a good segue to my next question, actually, because I wasn't planning on asking this, but it's, it's just had a, I've just had the light bulb moment. When Omondi got drawn in the Champions, sorry, in the Champions either, I wish. The Europa League group stages with United. I saw a whole heap of people tweeting stuff like, oh, who are Ammonia? You know, it sounds like a disease. Obviously, you've got this, the, the banter and all that kind of shit that you, that you see on social media. But when you've got, you mentioned Premier League footballers that have never played uh, European football. 
surely, surely some of them might be looking at these, you know, clubs like Omonia, like your sheriffs, like your, and thinking, well, while they're not playing in a super competitive league in terms of the, the elite level, should I say, like a Serie A, Premier League, whatever, surely there is some incentive to go to these clubs to think, okay, the, there is that opportunity to play European football because obviously we've seen players come to Cyprus and, They've done relatively... I mean, look at Punch, for example. Punch has play, played for Buffalo. He play, he's now in North Sea. For we know, next season, he might be playing Europa League football. Yeah, I mean, he's loving life, mate. Yeah. You know, I, th yeah, I, th I think... I think, um, for me especially, you know, the reason why I came abroad again was for the longevity of it. You know, I love playing football. I, I You know, I love training every single day. Um, and for me to play longer as long as I possibly can um, you know that was one of the, the main reasons not because of the intensity or anything like that it was more to do with the games you know in the championship it's Saturday, Tuesday Saturday, Tuesday every single week um, and me I want to play every week you know you know what I'm like mate I want to play every single minute of every single game and when I don't I, you know I, I, I can't sit back on the bench I hate that stuff mate which has obviously been a downfall sometimes but you know, when I came to Ammonia, there was, you know, there was, a f there was fewer games. Um, obviously, we had the European competition in my first year, which was amazing. But there's fewer games and obviously the intensity is a little less. Um, but yeah, I, me personally, I would advise, and as you, as you see now, mate, with the likes of Barker and people like that, and go, mate. Go, go and do it. Go and play these competitions. Go and play in Cyprus. Go and play in Greece. Go and play in these foreign countries. Enjoy it, mate. You get you get a very short period of time to play football in your career, mate. 20 years, 22, whatever it might be. Go and experience it, mate, you know. Do what you love while you're, while you're having a great time with your family. Why not? So, were you surprised to see Lennon come to the club? Because I know it ended a bit funny with Berg. Again, looking back on it, maybe they pulled the trigger too soon. But then again, we ended up winning the cup under Lennon. So was that a surprise to you seeing coming seeing come in? Um, yeah, it was a surprise seeing Berg go. If I'm if I'm quite honest with you, but like I said, mates, football uh, and sometimes exactly. change is needed. Sometimes change is needed. Um, but yeah, I actually uh, yeah, I was surprised that he came in. I'm not surprised um, because. You see a lot of managers now coming abroad and doing very similar things to what a player would do, having having that seriousness and being able to enjoy that off time with your family. So it's you know why not? And obviously play these these European competitions. Um, but no, it's good to see the likes of Lennon and Berg and these other big names coming into into Cyprus and and putting their mark down on on the you know on the Cyprus flag, but. I, I really, really wish him so well, mate, because I love the way he is on the sidelines. I think he's great for the fans. I think he'll be great for the players. And, you know, from what I from what I hear, he's very, very, very tough on the players as well, as in training-wise. You know, and if he can bring that intensity up day in, day out, like to refer, like Berg, Berg did in certain days as well, you know, it, it can only stand the club in great stead, you know? Mm. The thing is with Berg, the last, I don't know, the last four or five months of, of his tenure, we noticed a change in his attitude and his personality. And I don't think it was negative. I just felt he seemed a little bit deflated. Perhaps it was, I don't know, lack of transfer activity in the summer. Maybe he didn't bring in the players that he wanted, but he was playing the same system. It became very predictable. A lot of players were making the same mistakes. And you're thinking, what's going wrong in the background? And then Lennon comes in and it's almost as if it, it's a breath of fresh air, but at the same time, it's not fair to say that about Berg because he brought so much success to this club. He trusted so many young players. He he made gambles that a lot of coaches wouldn't, you know. So I think while yeah, it didn't end great with him, you know, losing four two to Upworld twice in a row ain't great. We can't forget what he did for the club, especially in that short period of time. Because let's get it right, man. A lot of managers, especially I mean, look at Guardiola for example. See, and that's a bad example, but. It took him about a year and a half, two years to get things right. I mean, his first season at City wasn't great and 
they're spending money left, right, and center. They still continue to do so. But when you're at Almonia and you've got constant changes, 15, 16 players leaving the club and coming in, it's very difficult to, to make that transition. So for him to finish first in his first season, really, the COVID year, to win the title the year later, come on, man, that, that's that's got to be no, some not, achievement. I'm honestly, sorry. no one should ever, ever uh, forget what he's done for the club, ever. Really, you know? Whether people like him or they don't like him, he did amazing for the club. Two years, two trophies, mate. You know, okay, the third year, it happened. You know, but you you can't you can't take his name out of your mouth if if you know what I mean. Because he won he won silverware, mate. You know, he got he got to the Champions League qualifiers. He got to Europa League qualifiers, mate. He did an amazing job. And no one can ever say that he didn't. You know, would he have turned things around? We'll never know because he's gone. Do you know what I mean? You know, and then then first two years we had a few older players that the transition needed to happen as well. So maybe the third year was going into a transition. Who knows? You know, I think I think they threw him under the bus though. I think they threw him under the bus. The, listen, that's my opinion anyway. But when ah, you look that's, at the, that's, your, that's your opinion. You know, but the, shall, 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 shall I tell you why? Shall I tell you why? Yeah, sorry to cut you. There's two reasons, and it's it just revolves around the transfer uh, policy. Because in last summer, when um, we, we, okay, we made some very good signings. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think they backed him when he needed to be backed. And I think it was the timing of the transfers. And if you look at the January transfer window, for example, we went 30 days without signing any player, and then the final day we bring in two players completely out of the blue. Don't get me wrong. One of them was good. The other one is right now sitting on the bench doing fuck all. Or he's, I don't know he's even sat on the bench now. But again, if you don't back the manager, then how do you expect things to be turned around? But at the same time, yeah, we don't know what happens know, in the you've background. Got to, so. You've got to remember, mate, you can't just bring in anybody. No, I agree. You don't agree. bring anyone just, just to, for, for the case of showing the fans that, oh, we've, we've brought in a player here. No, you've got to bring the right quality in. That's I agree. Going to help the club. And if you can't find better... Than what we've already got, you don't you don't sign anybody. I know we I know we needed transfers. I know that, but like I said before, mate, you have to bring the right quality in. If mm. you know, if you don't, don't do it. You know. But listen, in regards to if he's been shafted or not, I don't know, mate. I honestly I don't know. But all I'm gonna say is he did an amazing job at Ammonia for my time, especially when I was there. He was he was great. Great with the older guys, you know. He really looked after them. He was fantastic with the younger kids. He had a great balance there. Um, so, I, me personally, I would I speak I would speak to Berg regularly. You know, I'd send him a message here and then. Um, but for me, tremendous job, mate. Brilliant, brilliant, mate. Do you know I've got a whole heap of comments here because, to be honest, I've neglected the live chat because there's so many people here. So, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna ask you another question, right? And while you're answering, I want people that's watching live to put any questions they want to ask so within reason. I mean, we don't need to get personal with Matt because you know <laughs> there's some things you can't. There's something some things you can't answer, you know, and some things that he can tell me on WhatsApp that I can't put in here. But <laughs> no photographs. <laughs> so gonna, let me bring out some of these comments here. Yeah? So we got. Oh, look at this. Matt is on fire. Your defense is. Did, they, did anyone sing songs about you, Matt? Do you know yeah, many songs? That was, yeah, that was, that was one of them, Matt, yeah. Yeah? Ah, uh, look at yeah, these excellent. comments here. Nice. There's loads of them, man. Look at this. Good morning. Uh, yeah, this one, I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Indy Goz, I'm in the Shizman, it's okay. All right, we're talking in Greek now, okay. Matt, how do you feel when Omonia face Olympiakos? Have we had this conversation, didn't we? Didn't yeah. we? On the last time you were on, two years ago, it's been two years, bro. Fucking hell. Yeah, very strange, mate. Very, mm. very strange. Yeah, I just wanted to see a good game, mate, you know? <laughs> I just wanted to see a good game. <laughs> on the fence, splinters on your ass, mate. <laughs> uh, you're not wrong, mate. You're not wrong. No, no, I, I, I love both clubs, mate. I had a great time at both clubs. And yeah. Both sets How'd of you fans Amazing. How do you feel about Olympia Goz right now? Roy putting Roy is watching. And yeah, I ask what you think about Olympia Goz situation. Have you seen what's happened to him now? Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen. They sat their coach. Time, <laughs> yeah, it seems like, like again, it seems like they're going through a massive trans um, transition period. Mm. You know, where 
they haven't got that balance at the moment. You know, I know they've just signed some, you know, new players, some some big hitters as well, mate. You know, and they're looking for another, I think, goalkeeper as well, a big hitter. You know, um, but listen, they'll be fine, mate. They'll be fine. It's one of these transitional periods again. Um, fans have got to obviously stay with the team, which they always do anyway, regardless. You know, um, mm. but. They will win and win and win and there will be many, many wins to come, mate. So, uh, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, I think it's one of them periods where it's going to take a bit of time to get the team settled, to get the right coach. Let's get Valverde back, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Your mate. <laughs> Your mate. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yeah, another one from Roy. Hi, Captain. All the best, both personally and in your career. Don't forget about us. Roy, stop being such a tart. Fucking hell, man. Don't forget uh, about me. Tell him to put his hat on. I don't like seeing me out a hat on, mate. Whoa. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> I can't talk. Fuck me. Jesus. Um, Matt, thank you for everything. You made us feel proud at difficult times. We love you, man. I'm sorry, I can't see the... When it's on Facebook, it doesn't bring up the names. So, um, it's just, just Grey Man. Thank I'm just calling Grey Man. Thank you. There you go. Matt, why do you think more... Eng ah, this is a good question. Why do you think more young English players are moving abroad in recent years? You consider yourself a trendsetter. Look at this one. Absolutely, I've seen your dress mate. sense. Absolutely, yeah. mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just... If, like I said in the comments before, mate, if if they want to take football serious and they want to um, play longer, you know, get the most out of their career and they, take, they come and take it serious, why not, mate? Because like I said before... You're not going to play. Most players don't get to kick a ball in the Champions League. Most players don't get to kick a ball in Europa League. Why not? If you if you if you love the football and you want to play at the highest level, and you've got an opportunity to come here and do that, do it, mate. There you go. Matt was the light of hope back in 2016. Look at this—the beacon of justice. You are fucking hell. Have you started thinking about? Sorry. The light of hope. The light of hope. There you go. That, that, should, yeah, that you can um, you can trademark that. Put that as no, your thing. Steady, steady mate. <laughs> Have you started thinking about what you'll do after you finish your career as a player? Well, I know. Yeah. Going... yeah. No, I I want to I want to go into to coaching. I want to be a football coach. Absolutely. Um, but I want to take it slowly. I think I don't want to just rush in and jump in at the deep end. Um, I want to I want to really learn my trade really really learn my trade whether it's working with the younger kids and you know being pushed up and pushed up and gradually walking into a dress room and being able to uh try and handle every situation that's thrown at you you know because that's very important to be able to, to, to be able to handle big personalities small personalities whatever you know and for me it's very important the man management style you know i i, I want to get that under my belt so much because i feel i'm good with people i'm good with the players so i if I can bring that into my into my management style, perfect. Excellent. Yeah, we've got someone in Australia watching. See, we're far and wide. How did you find uh, playing in Australia? Very good, mate. Yeah, very transitional. Um, back and forth a lot, but yeah, to be honest with you, mate, I've never done as much, as much running in my life as I did there. You know, <laughs> it's it's mental, but I loved it. Love my time there. Love the club. Love the people around the club. The fans are great. Um, you know, to say it was a new club, new franchise, it was, um, yeah, very, very good time. But, you know, did, did quite well out there as well. So it's always good when you do well. You, you get fond memories of places. So, yeah, it was good. Ah, here we go. How did you feel when you scored against us? See, I was going to ask that question, but it, it, to be honest, my question was going to be more like, how did it feel kind of like ghosting Hubo? Because I saw you taking a couple of steps back when he was watching the ball. I'm thinking, oh, he's, he's, gonna, he's done him. He's done him already. Just by, he should have known uh, that movement, Hubo. mate. He should have known it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, mate, when you're playing, you want to score so badly. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because I, I love scoring goals, mate. But when I scored, it was like, I was so happy to have scored. But against the money, it's like, right, it, I've done my job. No celebration. Yeah. I've got too much respect for the fans there to, to, to even think about celebrating. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I was doing my job, mate. You know, and, mate, do you know, do you know when, you, when you scored, I was just like, 
Do you know what? I, I I didn't feel anything. Like I didn't feel anger. I didn't feel. It was just like, well, it, it is what it is, kind of thing. Yeah. Because you're doing your job. You're doing your job. Yeah. So yeah. look at this guy. Fuck this Malaga man. Every day I get this from him. This is Rodri. He's moved on to bigger and better things. Group B fodder. He calls us Group B fodder because we were Group B last season. This fucking uh, guy. He's just pissed <laughs> off because his FP. Listen, he's almost 200 points behind me in FPL. Yeah, Rodri. Fucking these, these Welsh people, they qualify for a World Cup and they give it all of this. Fuck off. Anyway, <laughs> starting with this guy. Fuck, you know. Anyway, ah, here we go. Who do you consider the most influential coach in your career? That's a good oh, question. Wow. Well, I've had about 500 of them, mate, so... <laughs> um, first, of, well, first of all, I've got to say Mark Hughes was unbelievable, mm. mate. Unbelievable. Um, he gave me my debut in the Premier League, which I'll never forget, you know. And I nearly ended up signing for him. Um, not Bradford? Again. Yeah, not long ago. Oh, OK. Um, but obviously things didn't work out in the end. We won't go into that, but um, yeah. So that would have been nice to have been able to play for him again. He was he was fantastic, Mr. Valverde. I will give a huge mention to because he really, really taught me the continental football style and how it should be played. And who's this coming in here? It's Roy. Here go, he's, right? he's coming to say hello. Hey, up, mate. <laughs> yeah. So Hi, Matt. How are Mr. you, man? How are you, mate? Okay. Are you in the car? Yeah, I'm in the car, man. I just I I had to say he. he... He, he surprised us. He didn't tell me that you're going to be on. But obviously, I'm at work. But, you know, I just wanted to jump on for a few minutes to say thanks for all you've done. I mean, I told you that personally. But, you know, I can't yeah, thank you enough for what you've done, mate. Thank you very much. But he, listen, mate, he, he still told me he didn't want you on this show today. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, man. I'm sure. He wants you, all, he wants you over for himself, man. <laughs> oh, my. I'm joking, mate. I'm joking. Yeah, I know, man. I know, man. I know, man. I know, man. How's everything? Good. Settling in. It's very different. Very, very different, mate. But I'm looking forward to the challenge. I'm looking forward to the experience. Should be good. Are you there with your family? No. 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 Yeah. No. So that's going to be difficult. But I'll get back and forth with the international breaks and you know the, the breaks in the game. So, yeah, it should be okay. How long is your contract for? Um, it is one year. Okay. And and yeah. when does the season start? Oh, it's already started the season because there's oh, eighth of October. Eighth of October. Well, there's there's Haris Kiriaku, who a player who used to play for Ammonia and Ael and I think was Akhnas who signed there, and there's Steve Constantine as well in in India, I think. And ne? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I haven't looked. I haven't looked at the squads or anything yet, mate. I'm like okay. that. You know, I, I turn up and play. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man, because uh, I'm at work, you know, I'm sure Stell's doing a pretty good job. I just wanted to thank you so much. I I, I had to tell you that, man. <laughs> thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Honestly, thank you so much. All the best. All the best, Matt. Okay? All the best. Look after yourself, mate. Thanks, man. Bye-bye. Cheers, Cheers guys. Oh. And then you know there was what? two. This guy, yeah, he, um, he saw that his internet. So he got these boosters around his house. And ever since his internet has improved, I like he's, he's completely changed. He's become more confident in front of the camera. He's become more ballsy. Like he's given me stick as well. I'm like, I think it's about. something else, mate. You reckon? He's still yeah. here. He's still in the fucking room. He's, he's still here. Why don't you go to work? Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> he's lurking. You know? I'm, I'm eavesdropping, man. I'm eavesdropping. I'm listening to you guys, man. <laughs> Well, we're live. It's not as if like you can't see it. <laughs> we, we, we we know why you've got a big smile on your face, mate. Why is that, man? Well, you know. well the, the, the booster has a blue light. Has he got a blue pill? Yeah, but I ain't got a booster now because I'm at work. I, I'm on 4G at the moment. Oh, wow. Moving up in the world. Yeah. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to go now so I can continue this this interview? I thought you kicked me out. I don't know. What do I have to do? Do I have to press end, or if I press end, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the the stream? No, don't press end. 
No, no, no. I give you admin privileges so that just yeah. in case the dog fucker can't be on. Yeah, don't <laughs> mess this up. Okay. Okay. Just, just tell just me what out. I have to do. Just, 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 just go away. <laughs> yeah, no. I, okay. I, okay. Yeah. Are you are you on Safari? What what fund have you got? Have you still got the um? Which fund is it? I don't know. You, you sent me the link. Must on... be a thirty-two ten. <laughs> yeah, he's playing Snake. Playing Snake. <laughs> I think if you just close your browser, I think that'll just that'll do it. Okay. Okay. Black City boys had to buy again. Had so we just wait. It's just wait. It's a wait. Because it's, no, no, it's no, I don't, I don't... Oh, wait. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I love green in this guy, man. I love him to bits. Like. He's brilliant. Fucking hilarious. All right, more questions. More questions. Uh, uh, yeah, we've gone 45 minutes. Got a few more questions in, and then uh, yeah. If you could partner any striker in history, who would it be? Oof, I know Giro. who it is. I, I, <laughs> I didn't even have to think Come about on, mate. it. Didn't have to think about it. You got two like signed it. shirts, yeah? Yes. Two signed Shearer shirts. I don't, I don't. It's my idol, mate. I'd love to have. I've, I've played against him a few times, but never, never with him. So that would have been good. So you played against him, yeah? Yeah, of course, yeah. And what was that like? I, I think I was just running after him, like trying to touch him. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Can I smell your shirt? <laughs> yeah. No, no, legend, mate, legend. Now nah, he legend. was, yeah, he was one of the best, one of the best, man. Like, when you talk about traditional centre forwards, he was. But the thing is, he scored goals from outside the box. Everywhere, like, it wasn't mate. everywhere, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Header, loved, loved the header, mate, didn't he? Yeah, absolutely, loved the header, absolutely. Oh, look at this one. Greetings from Amsterdam. What are you doing in Amsterdam? Are you living there? Or are you making the most of yeah Amsterdam? The yeah, shops? yeah. yeah greetings from Amsterdam. Uh, thank you very much. Love legend. Thank you very much. Enjoy Amsterdam. I wonder if he lives out there, or if he's out there for the coffee shops, because there's there's one called Lacana, which is brilliant. The I coffee mean, shops, yeah, just the coffee shops. Yeah. Just the coffee shops. <laughs> just the coffee shops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For nothing else. I don't know. Hey, look, what Greek words have you? We've done this before. What Greek words have you learned? But I mean, can't be said. Can't be said on here, mate. I can't say them on here. Nah, well, you can, but nah, there's kids really watching, best. mate. There's kids watching. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like ten or ten thirty in Cyprus, anyway. Yeah, but but um, everything you can possibly imagine—that's a bad word. I I know, which I've been taught from the lads. Bro, I don't think it, there is one player that's gone to Cyprus that hasn't learned. The words I still mate, I know? still find myself now saying Greek words when I'm still playing, mate. It's mental. <laughs> I know I've not been gone long, but still like I'm still, yeah, yeah, of still the lads, I'm still saying Adi and Malaka and things like this, you know. It's crazy. But, it stays with you, right? Exactly. It's it's a force of habit. It's it's yeah. a force of habit. It's it's unbelievable. But yeah, I think you'd be learning some other words while you're but then again, how many languages are there in India now? There's like 12, 13, if, if not, if not more. It's a, Greek's almost impossible for me, right? So this is going to be <laughs> ridiculous, mate. Jesus yeah. fucking hell. Oh, bro, listen, it's been close to now, man. I really appreciate you jumping on. Um, I don't want to take up too much of your time because obviously you've got training ahead of you and everything. But, um, you know, it's it's been great having you. And hopefully you can come on more often. I know obviously... You've got your training, you've got your new club and everything, and obviously there's a time time difference. But you you stay on top of the games, don't you? I mean, you know the Omonia score, you saw the highlights and everything. What did yeah. you make of the, 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 the game yesterday from what you saw in terms of a overall perspective of the club? Good, mate. Good good mixture of goals, by the way. The goals were nice. I enjoyed the, the goals. Um, the, the new boy from Ike, he, he scored a very decent goal, mate. I enjoyed that, but you know, I, I always love a cross goal, mate. Yeah, you know, the, the yeah. one that Jan put in, the one that Jan put in was was a was a fantastic ball as well. With the full one, yeah. May he, yeah, long continue doing that because you know strikers love that stuff. Mm. Um, but no, they they look they look sharp, mate. They look sharp. They look energetic. Um, left wing is very good. I like him, up and down, mate. Um, yeah. I, one thing I will have to say is, mate, Harold Lumbus. What, what a player he's mm. turning out to be, mate. You know, I, I always knew he had something, and I've always told him this. And if he's watching, he'll know I tell him this. 
he's a he's a top player, mate. You know, and and when when you start to have that mentality of becoming, oh, actually, I am a good player. I'm a top player. I can be a top player. Things start to switch. You know. What I would say, obviously, Luizo's done amazingly well, mate. He's done fantastic. He's come in. He's, he's he's really he's really come out of himself. You know, same again. Was always a good player, but when he's obviously switched on now here and you know he's, he's doing very well, but. How Columbus is gonna is gonna go far, mate. I believe that's my opinion only. You know, people out there might say no chance, but I believe, mate, he's gonna be a top top player. Yeah, it, it, see, this is the thing. I remember speaking to Michael about him a couple of years ago, and he was saying Lois is brilliant, Johnny's is brilliant, you know, even Gaggle is is good, but Humble's got that something different. You know, he's got that element of. You know, how can I put? No, I wouldn't say like elite talent, but you could tell he's got. He can pick out a pass. He's aggressive. He's box to box. He's yeah. he's practically like. It, it would be unfair for me to say he's. How can I put it? He's got everything because he doesn't have everything. He's still a kid. At the end of the day, he's a kid. Man. He's a kid. And, and, and by I'm the quite... way, you can't put too much pressure on him. By the way, no. let him let him no. be free. Let him play. Let him keep getting coached. You know, because that's the most important that he keeps getting coached and playing. You know. It, the more he plays, the better he'll become, right? Um, mm. And also, Kaku, doing an amazing job running that line for, for Ammonia, you know? His work rate is second to none. Um, he, he puts himself about, he's got a lot stronger, I see, mate. He's, 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 scoring, he's scoring more goals. and I'm very happy for him, mate. I'm very happy for him. He needs to keep his head down and keep working hard. And same again, mate, he, he, you know, he can, he can do things. We got. It's like a fan club now, Matt. Sorry to interrupt you, mate. I've got this guy here. Look, you should be at work. What are you doing here? Hey, he got, is. It, it's my break, bro. It's my break. <laughs> what time is I it? Was, what time is it in Cyprus? It's, it's ten thirty. And it's your break, mate. What happened to lunchtime breaks? <laughs> <laughs> it's a five-minute break that is justified after you did a good job at something. That's how I can say it. Uh, I'm not going to speak to I'm not going to speak too long, Matt. I wanted to come on because I've never been able to personally thank you for everything that you've done. I know you've probably heard this many, many times. I've sent you a few messages, we've exchanged a few messages. You're a legend. Uh, we're always going to love you, man. You, you always mean a lot to us, and uh, hopefully, we see you one time back at the club in maybe a different role in the future. All the best, Matt, to so. you and your family. I hope so. I hope so. Thank you so much, mate. Appreciate it. And still does speak a lot, so try to interrupt him now and then, okay? <laughs> I'm trying, mate. I'm trying. <laughs> Thank listen, you, everybody. Listen, yeah, I love you. Yeah, I love you. You're, you're a good friend of mine. You came to England. We, 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 we met up. I came to Cyprus. But listen, I can cuss your mum if I want to, yeah? <laughs> Be careful. Easy. I'll go uh, there if I have to. Watch him. I'm off. I'm joking. I'm off. I'm joking. I'm off. Hi. Be safe, Finish brother. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. Bye-bye, No boundaries with mates. Don't worry. <laughs> Gotta got like it, mate. <laughs> but yeah, um, fucking hell, I forgot what I was going to say now. He, he interrupted me, this guy. Okay, yeah, sorry. You, you're talking about Humber, right? Um, I wanted to ask you about the, the youngsters that I'm on. Again, we've almost done an hour, so I'm, I'm not going to take up too much of your, more of your time. But Pana, if you want to talk about Pana, uh, we want to talk about Gagu. You know, we can't ignore these these lads. Obviously, Loizu has been, you know, front and centre for the past couple of years and his form dipped a little bit and there was that issue with the contract or whatever. As it, would do. It, As it would do, mate. As yeah. it would do. It's human. Yeah. You ha your head gets turned. The big club's coming in. It's normal, mate. You know, now he's signed this long-term deal. We need to start seeing, you know, again, we'll see... The, sorry, not we need to. We will see the best of him, I'm sure. Mm. Absolutely. So what about, what about Gaggle then? Because he's another one that's come under immense criticism from a lot of supporters. And I think they've seen the rise of Humbo and Johnny's and, and Loizo and they think that Gaggle is going to be just as, if not better than these guys. But it's like I said with Dura, it's what he does off the ball. I mean, people don't realise how much ch running this kid does in terms of chasing yeah. down lost causes. You know, they were, they were telling me the other day after the, um, which game was it? against Abolon, they were saying to me, oh, Gagu should have played if he was fit. We missed him. I'm like thinking, hang about, you're telling me two weeks ago that he's not good enough. But yeah. now you need someone to do all the running and the dog work. And he's, I think he's a good player, man. If he gets more, sorry, if he improves on his goal scoring or his shooting accuracy, we'll have a top dog here, man. 
Yeah, I think I think because he does so much running around the place, you know, he, he does a hell of a lot, mate. A hell of a lot. And I watched him. I went to the game against Ike um, at home at the Gussie B. And, you know, he put he put himself about a lot, mate. Mm. And it's, it takes a lot out of you. It really does, mate. Running around so much when you get when you get an opportunity to score, you, sometimes your legs ain't as fresh as they should be, you know. Um, and the pitches as, as don't get, help. The what? The pitches don't help out there. Uh, no, no, of course, of course. But I'm just saying in general, any no matter where you play, when, whether the pitch are nice or whatever, when you do so much running around that pitch, mate, when when you come to finish a shot, your legs are not as fresh. Um, but he'll soon learn when to do the running and when not, you know, when not to. And that comes with experience. It, it really does, mate. Um, you know, when, because at the moment now, the fans are, ah, you know, they're shouting, go press, press. So he's pressing and, the, you know, it's, it, it looks great. Mm. But sometimes you just don't need to do that sort of, no need running, if you, if you will. Yeah. Do you know, what I'm, do you know yeah. what I'm saying? And then he'll get into, get, you know, he'll feel a lot fresher when he's in front of goal. He'll, He'll put himself into better positions where he where he, where he think the, the ball might go. Um, and it's experience. He's only what? How old is he? 21, 22? 21, 22, Yeah, yeah. yeah so he's, he's a kid, mate. He really is. He's still a kid. <laughs> and he's he's playing a lot of games. I think last year he played. Did he play ridiculous amounts of games? Yeah, he, he played. I think three quarters of our games last season. I think he featured yeah. anyway. Yeah. So you know, Matt, what, it's what I was saying about Loizo. Like there was there was a fa- stage last season where he was dropped from the Cypriot national team, and people were making a big fuss about it. And I'm saying, in the past two years, he played close to ninety games in two yeah, years. You've got to, you have to protect him as well, mate, because you can have burnout as well. They're only kids, mate. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'm sure Lennon knows exactly what he's doing because he's a very very experienced uh, manager. So, um, I think being under that type of coach. That likes the youngins as well can only benefit him, mate. Really, mm. and with his connections, you know, down the future, you never know what can happen if if they want to, you know, move to England, whatever it might be. Um, who knows? But for the time being, they are money players and finished. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I've got one more very quick question uh, before we wrap out because again, I don't want to take keep you. You know, I thought we can do forty five minutes on closer now, but um. Yeah, so look, Gagul played 49 games last season. Most of our games had the most appearances. There you go, see? 49 games last season. Yeah. Jesus. Um, so my final question, um, and it's about the Youth Academy, because you were there when the transition was made, when when uh, Jesper was around. Yeah. And um, things began to change and the players were developing. So what do you have to say about the coaching staff there? Because for me, I don't think they get enough credit. Fair enough, Berg will get the credit for blooding these players. Lennon will get, will get the credit for playing these players. Obviously, the players will get the credit for, for working hard. But in terms of the staff that are there, that are working in the background, I mean, you've seen them you know, make that massive difference. What do you have to say about everything that's been happening around the club there? No, I think, mate, always these youth coaches, they don't get enough praise, mate. They never do. You know, they, they get their praise from seeing the player go onto the first team pitch and do well, you know. But I 100% agree with you, mate. They're doing a tremendous job bringing these these kids through through the academy system into the first team. And also, like you said, it takes it takes a lot of balls from the the, the, the first team manager as well to let them have that pathway, you know. So fair play to the first, obviously the first team coach as well, but. Um, Day in day out, these coaches they don't get enough recognition. You know, like I said, they're just happy to see the player progress and go on to do bigger and better. And then it's the next one, and then it's the next one. Do you know what I mean? That's their job to find that that diamond in the dirt, bring the best out of it, clean it up, and push it inside. You know, and then obviously that's where they get this experience from. That's where the, the first team coaching, the intensity, everything comes when you go into the first team. Because tra- training with the first team players every day in and day out can only make you better, mate. Well, yeah. Well, the thing is, they um the under nineteens uh, played in the UEFA. What's it called? The UEFA, UEFA Youth League against um, Red Star Belgrade, and and they lost one nil. But 
you know, to think that the under 19s of Omonia are playing in a UEFA youth league. Do you get what I'm saying? Right. Like, five or six years ago, that that is unheard of. I think this is the first year that they're that they're doing it. So, you know, the, the progress that the club has made, I think it's been brilliant. And on top of that, when you've seen the likes of Johnny's going to MLS, and I know a lot of people say, oh, it's just MLS, but come on, man, like for a Cypriot kid to go to, to Kansas, it's a massive state, man. Yeah, and to be fair, to be, you know what, mate? I obviously haven't spoke about Johnny's at all, but honestly, he is one of the hardest working kids I've ever seen in my life, mate. Every single day he would be there before training, after training, constantly working on himself with the ball. One of the nicest boys as well, by the way. Great boy. Never, ever spoke spoke out of turn. Never made my like he is, if you want to say. Um <laughs> He just literally got on with himself, respected his elders, you know, respected the coaches because he knew he had tunnel vision, mate. He had tunnel vision and he was like, right, I'm getting mine. And he got it. You know, he got a great move. And it took, maybe it took him a bit longer than it should have done, but he got, he got his move. And in, the, in what was it, his final season, he did so, he did so well, mate, you know. He scored some important goals, mate. Especially when everyone was speaking about other players, you know, he still kept that tunnel vision, and he got he got what he deserved. Absolutely, mate. It's it's wild how the kid progressed. Do you get what I'm saying? And that season we won the title. The goals that he scored, and we're talking like last minute goals. I know, yeah. One on one with the goalkeeper, the, the exposure that he showed. You're thinking this is this lad 20, 21, or is he twenty seven, twenty eight? You know, yeah. so. Again, that's a, that's a testament to him. And again, it goes back to the coaching. I think, you know, they, they coach him with this no fear mentality. And I think that you've got to have it, especially at, at any level, not just, you know, Cypriot football or Premier League. You've got to have it at any any level. Because we see that. Didn't ask then, again, you know, then, then again, mate, like, you know, I, I messaged when he, when, he got, when he did get his move, I messaged him saying, listen, don't let this be you know, a one thing going to the MLS, you know, you should, you should be looking again with your tunnel vision. You should be looking to go there, smash it and move to a bigger club. Cause he's still a kid, mate. Do you know what I mean? Which he should absolutely be playing in Europe, mate. Yeah. At, 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 in, in his, in his career. So, um, if he keeps his, his feet on the ground and he keeps working as hard as he's been working when he was at Ammonia, I can see him going on to bigger and better things, mate. Well, they, they with, do with rate him. With, with all anyway. respect to this club, by the way. No, of course. Of course. But I, th I think Sporting Kansas probably signed him with the thought that, OK, we'll develop him and we'll sell him for a big fee. Because that, that's what they do. But the work's, the work's got to come from him, mate, which I'm sure it will. 100%. 100%. He's a, he's a top lad. And as you said, he works hard and he, he's, he is where he's at because he deserves it. And I think him moving to MLS... It's a great statement and a good example for all the young Cypriot kids who perhaps think no one's really watching us. No one cares about us. I'm not really going to work my ass off. I'll play for my team, but that's as far as it gets. Look, Johnny's is, is in MLS. We've seen life. He's go to Belgium. Uh, uh, Gadelaris is in Belgium now. So there are there are eyes on, on the Cypriot League. It's just uh, down to the players to develop and, and work hard. And as you said, tunnel vision. So, yeah. It's good that he's in the national team as well, you know, because when you come back, people always speak about how you're doing and how you, you know, what you're doing and have you scored and doing this. So he's always got something to go, right, I need to score, I need to do this, I need to do this, do this. So I go back and I can, you know, the lads know what I'm doing, you know what I mean? It's, a, it's yeah. an extra motivation. Yeah. Because I, I remember when I, when I used to play for England in the 21s, mate, you always wanted to score the week before. Or the weekend off, he was travelling because the lads are there. You scored, you know, you've scored in the prem, and you go there. And they, they know, they know. Do you know what I mean? It's it's, it's yeah. a big boost to your confidence as well. So, yeah. Brilliant. Well, listen. At least his dress sense has improved. I've got to give him that. Can't go to America and be on all that money. About that, mate. I, mate, I used to have his. <laughs> I used to have his dress sense. But... <laughs> well, it's better than it's better than Michael's. It's better than Michael's. Mate, any, <laughs> anybody beats Michael's dress sense, mate. I oh, don't say he's he's gonna come at me now. He's gonna message me. <laughs> what are you fucking talking true. about me? 
because he's sponsored by Nike, you don't have to wear Nike everything, mate. <laughs> All Nike everything, mate. <laughs> three three times too small to you. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Go back on the, the small T-shirts again, yeah? <laughs> Yes. Brilliant. Well, Matt, listen, bro. Thank you so much for your time, man. And um, listen, w let's do this again. Let's do this again. Hopefully, we could do like match reviews and all that whenever you're you're available. And obviously, the sure. time difference is a bit of bit of an issue, but it's always great talking to you, bro. On and off camera, obviously. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you for everyone that's been watching live and, and your questions. Um, any last words, Matt? No, last thank you, to everybody like, like you're on your deathbed. Fucking hell, last words. No. I know, yeah. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Could be with this uh, food, I'm joking. Um, Bro, I'm going before you, don't worry. <laughs> uh, no, thank you for all the, uh, you know, anyone that's commented on the on the, the comment thing, whatever it is. Thank you so much for all the love, I appreciate it. Um, and I wish Ammonia the best of luck always, of course. Um, and yeah, cheers, Stel. Thanks for having me on, mate, I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. So um, that's it. Another episode of No Choftis. I know it was uh, an impromptu one, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed it. I obviously enjoyed talking to Matt. I'm sure Roy enjoyed it. Chris enjoyed it. Chris is looking more and more like Stan from the Eminem uh, video. By the way. So when, <laughs> when he said I've been messaging, he says I've been messaging you all this time. I'm thinking I, it comes a Stan joke, but I'm not going to do that. So <laughs> that's it for that ed edition. We'll be back. I don't know when we'll be back. The next game is against Voxa, which is in a couple of weeks' time because we've got the international break. But something might happen in between that. You never know, because drama always follows Omonia. So that's it for another show, boys and girls. As Roy says, bummish.